Mr. Fancy Hand says, at what price tag do you think guitars stop getting better and start being about personal taste? And that question is actually a question about brand. Ibanez is not going to make you the same quality guitar as Harley Benton for $300. They're just not. They don't do it. Harley Benton makes a better $300 guitar than Ibanez's is $300 guitar in my opinion. So every company is kind of known for having a sweet spot too, where the guitars get good. And that's really the better conversation is instead of what price tag do they get, you know, do they stop getting better? It's where everybody's sweet spots at. And you don't even have to be a, a, a guitar connoisseur of all these brands to figure that out. Epiphone's a good one for me. It, it changes because prices keep going up. <laughs> but there was a time where Epiphone's for me under $300 were just horrible guitars. I just didn't like them. I would I would uh, dread working on them. And at $500, I just felt like they were fantastic guitars. So it was like the sweet spot they hit and it just got good. And you see it with brands all the time, especially brands that make lower, lower price, you know, entry level student grade instruments. That the, Not that I'm saying those instruments are bad, but you start noticing like how $50 makes such a huge difference on a guitar. Has anyone experienced this where you literally buy a guitar, you try a guitar, maybe that guitar is 300 bucks and then you try the same brand's $350 guitar and it's far superior how everything just opens up. I think that uh, it's not so much where it stops, but where do guitars have their sweet spot for each brand? Where guitars objectively stop getting better, where where I don't believe anymore. That's actually another thing, a way to put this too. There's a there's a law of diminishing returns, and on most guitars, it's going to happen when the guitars get, I want to say, ten times more expensive than the average guitar. And that seems to be a number, right? When I see a five hundred dollar guitar, I think that's a great guitar nowadays. When I see a five thousand dollar guitar, I don't think it's ten times better. It's just not. So there's obviously a law of diminishing returns on that, and you see that a lot of bit. But, but that being said, uh, I don't take away from the fact that it's really cool to own that guitar, that high-end guitar. There's something cool about that. In fact, I've said this before and I'll keep saying it over and over again. There's something cool about owning a unique guitar, period. The cool thing about that, which is where one of the motivations of this channel is, you can have a unique guitar without spending a ton of money. That's why modding guitars are so cool. You can have something unique and not something expensive. And that's just the reality of it. Jordan says, with brands like Fender raising their prices so high, it feels like boutique builders have a lot more uh, validity in the market. Um, yes, obviously, obviously two things. As Fender prices, as it's always been this way, as the main brands get more expensive, the lesser known brands opportunity is of course the price it's and 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 keep in mind this is why i always like when i do a video when all, all these youtube channels do a video about a new brand a lot of people don't understand anyone who's been in this market for any period of time knows that sometimes the the sweetest deal is the new brand because they're just going for market share anyone who just wants any new business a lot of times the new business just wants market share it makes sense to sell product at almost no profit to get customers to start the brand, you know, start the, the ball rolling on the brand. So yeah, of course, uh, I, I, I don't think uh, you buy uh, name brands anymore f for value of dollar. I think you buy them for ease of mind to know that they're, a, you know, it's a better resale value, uh, average better quality because they have a brand name to protect. I don't mind small brands unless of course I get the vibe that they're fly by night. They're just going to make a bunch of junk and then, you know, disappear. But that's not really the most the, the case. Cletus says, I have a Gibson Les Paul standard. Okay. Really nice Tom Anderson. I love Tom Anderson's, but I keep coming back to my Epiphone Les Paul I've had for years. Do I have any guitar? Do you have any guitars you prefer others than you shouldn't? Absolutely. So in the room behind me, um, I can honestly tell you that one of my favorite guitars in this room is uh, that Dane Electro that I'm pointing at right there. That Dane Electro uh, 59, that is not a Dane Electro, so you know, that Dane Electro gave me. Steve at Dane Electro uh, sent me some Dane Electros, and of course I got to keep them, and that was very nice. But that I did that because I liked the brand. Talked about the guitars because I like those guitars. That particular guitar, oh, hit my guitar. Uh, that particular guitar I bought uh, uh, used because I wanted the color. It was black, metallic, and I liked it. Um, love that guitar. I'm into that guitar for 250 bucks. <laughs> this is only interesting because this subject literally came up yesterday when my wife came in here to ask me a question. And she was, when I was looking at paperwork, or whatever she had me doing, she was looking around the room and she was trying, she asked me, uh, which is the more expensive and what are the less expensive guitars in here? And we were talking exactly what you're talking about. And the prices did not equate to anything. 
there was no logic to what the guitars cost versus what I, how much I like them. If you enjoyed this podcast clip, you can watch the entire episode by clicking the link in the description or streaming it on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. You can also join it live every week, Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I hope to see you there. Until next time, know your gear.